Um, so yeah, um, welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, working from home practical steps through lockdown and beyond. Um, probably most people may not know, but I was only asked to do this um, the day before yesterday. So it's very quickly put together. Hopefully there's a lot of information in there that's going to be useful for you. Um, and um, we will be kind of um, taking sort of check throughout the webinar just to see how we're going with things. Um, so first and foremost, um, I know that um, Rory shared with you, um, they shared with you the different webinars that we've got coming up in the next um, few uh, weeks. Um, and so there's some fantastic webinars coming up. Um, do have a look at those, they're all on the Digital Knowledge Exchange website and also the uh, the uh, the one up in County Durham, I'm sorry, I don't know that one because I'm from um, Yorkshire, obviously, from the accent. Um, but have a look at what's coming up because there's some fabulous free webinars, uh, lots of free support right now, um, definitely worth having a look at some of those and, uh, and getting booked onto them if you can. Um, so, first and foremost, I'd like to just kind of introduce myself. Um, and uh, I know I know a couple of people on the webinar already have just had a look at the delegate list and stuff. So um, welcome to the webinar. Um, but just to introduce myself for those people that don't know me, I, I've been um, training now for 15 years. Um, I've also been um, in business support uh, for 10 plus years. So I work for, um, I work for a training provider um, years and years back. Then I worked for uh, Business Link as a business advisor. Um, and then I set up um, Social Progress eight years ago. Um, I work very closely with um, Facebook as a Facebook and Instagram trainer. And as you'll see on there, I've got a couple of um, blueprint accreditations um, and I've been to Facebook about four or five times now, I think, uh, sadly not in America. Um, in, I've been over to, uh, to Dublin um, and I've also been down to London about four times, uh, working with them on something called uh, She Means Business Programme. And, and also I work as, a, as it says there, a Facebook blueprint uh, trainer network trainer. I'm also, um, well, Social Progress is one of the Digital Knowledge Exchange top 100 uh, businesses. And, uh, and we have, uh, I'm, I'm also uh, chosen as one of the top 50 advisors in the UK, quite high accolades, but um, I'm not sure I always live up to these, uh, these things that they put me forward for, but there you go. Um, I'm a qualified business uh, coach and, uh, and I've done coaching, mentoring and management. So quite a lot of... Um, accreditations if you like there um, and just to kind of give you a bit of background as to why um, I'm kind of sat in the seat. Um, as it says on the left hand side there, yes I, I am the director of social progress with a team of five people based in Huddersfield um, and although it says uh, social media trainer and tea maker, I tend to drink a lot more coffee these days than tea, I don't know why but I've just made that transition so just how it goes. Um, You'll see in the bottom um, left-hand corner, that is our um, uh, handle for most things, whether you're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you look up social progress, you should find us. So please do like us, uh, follow us, and, uh, and engage with us. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And there's also the link there to our uh, website, which is uh, obviously there's a lot more information. Some of the stuff that we're talking about today, you'll see on there. Um, as we've already mentioned um, throughout the webinar, we're going to be having some stop points, um, just chances for people to um, ask questions. Uh, Andreas is going to be um, making a note of those, a lot of those. And so we may come to some of them at the end of the webinar, um, but do pe pe keep asking your questions. Um, but what we'd like you to do, if possible, is use the chat for any technical um, questions uh, but use the questions and answers section uh, for for you to ask your uh, to questions to us and um, they won't be shared by with other people they'll only be shared with uh, me and Andreas and so um, do ask your questions in there and what I'd like to do is first of all is ask you to um, to just um, get a piece of paper and and on that piece of paper on one side, if you could write um, how I feel today, uh, a plus, um, 
three takeaways, one, two, three. And on the flip side, if you can write win, learn, change. Um, while you're doing that, what I'd like you to do in the questions section, questions and answers section, if you can just put in there just one word of how you're feeling today. I know that we all feel very different on very different days. I know I'm exactly the same as you guys. One day I'll be feeling on top of the world. The next day, um, you know, I'm feeling quite stressed about it all and a bit anxious. So it would be really useful to... Uh, to just put in there if you can any any questions in there if you're not able to use the questions and answers um then do use the um the chat facility if that's if that's possible because it doesn't look like chats the questions and answers working for me right now but um do have a look at that oh we've got one so thank you um so do yeah it is working so please do put any questions and answers just one word and how you're feeling today okay um, I'm not going to read names out. I'm just going to probably read out um, what people are, are answering, um, which is uh, great. So uh, we've got positive, we've got stretched, we've got lacking motivation, deflated, um, busy, which, yeah, is good. Um, starting to feel better about things, um, which is lovely. Um, great comments so far. So keep those coming. I'll give you a couple of um, more sort of seconds to just write in how you're feeling on those. Um, fantastic. So feeling normal, positive, yeah, apprehensive, nervous, inquisitive. So um, I'm not sure if you can see those, uh, those actual um, uh, comments, which are be nice if you can but i think probably most of them are anonymous it's up to you whether you share them or not um but um as you can see we're all feeling very different on very different days um i'm a bit the same so some days i feel all right okay we, we're you know we're getting on top of this and then other times i feel a little bit like oh, gosh i don't know how long we're going to be in in this position and like somebody's already said you know busy yeah actually that's us we're we're busy, but actually what we're finding is that um, part of that busyness is we're kind of doing what we normally do, but we're trying to change things and find new ways of working. And that's the challenge is where um, we're just getting um, to groups with, with new ways of working. And so that, um, that learning process for us is sort of stuff on top of what we're already doing. I almost feel like I'm back to year one of, of starting out my business and, and just feeling like I've, I've got a whole new business to work in and on. So, and I'm sure that's the same for a lot of people. Okay, so yeah, keep calm and we're working from home. So don't panic, we're in it together. Um, it is challenging times. It's, it, it's difficult to, to kind of know what to do for the best. Um, but um, we are all in it together. Um, so, you know, just keep, keep plodding on is, is what I would say. Success is never straight and simple road. Um, it is very difficult to know and to plan and to predict. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when uh, lockdown is going to happen. And so it is, um, you know, challenging. Whether you're a business owner, an employee, a freelancer, it doesn't really matter who you are. Uh, so trader, you've all got the same challenges. Um, and for us, um, it's, it's full of those twists and turns. And right now is one of the hardest challenges we've ever faced. Probably none of us have faced anything like this before. Um, and, um, and so we're all kind of working through the best we can. However, there's some, there is some positives with all this as well, so which is, is good to hear. And I'm going to share some of those with you as well. The only, I mean, this is a, a, a comment that I kind of has held in my head, if you like, um, and something that I came across a few years back now. The one thing constant in life is change, which sounds bizarre, but it is. It's the only thing that uh, that is constant. The only thing that stays the same is change. So um, we just have to kind of get through that and work our way through those, those changing processes. Um, and what I'm going to share with you is some of the ways that some people have, have changed and, and adapted um, through, through this period and how they're looking to change and adapt in the future as well. So as I've said already, uh, we're in this together. Um, I asked you to write on your sheet, um, win, learn, change. Um, and uh, what I'd like you to do on um, the 
other side on the where I've asked you to put a plus is just write um, write down there um, something nice that's happened in the last week, something that you've enjoyed, uh, whether that's personal or uh, you know from a personal perspective or business perspective. Um, this is something that we try and do um, as a team. This is our team, and you'll see this post go out tomorrow. Actually, so we took this picture yesterday. We had a team meeting and. Uh, and we had a catch up and we're, what we're trying to do now is having uh, just a mini catch up through Zoom twice a week on a Tuesday, on a Friday. Um, and it's not about, you know, how's business, what clients have we got? It's not about any of that. Yes, that does come into the conversation. But what we try and focus on is, you know, what, what's happened, you know, in your own personal time, what, what are you enjoying doing right now? Uh, what have you been getting up to? What's been your highlights? Uh, and this was lovely yesterday because we had the picture of um, Becky in the top left with her little boy and Adam sat with uh, uh, Esther in the bottom. And then Alex on the right hand side, who actually is my son, doesn't have any children, um, but he's got a lovely dog called Tiny. Um, and I didn't have any of those, so I've just got some wings on me. So, but it's just lovely to see how, how things are changing. You know, life has changed very fast and it's not business as usual. And uh, we're having to change and adapt to ways of working. For example, this, this webinar, uh, I don't know about you, um, I've often thought about doing webinars, never done them. Uh, why? Because I didn't need to do them. I've, I quite enjoy that face to face contact. Um, however, I know for us, it's something that we have had to change and adapt to. Um, and, um, you know, so far, so good. Um, yes, it puts me outside my comfort zone slightly, um, but I've embraced it. I've tried to work through it and, uh, and I'm learning all the time. So everything I do is, is diff different. So, you know, it's difficult to plan when you don't know what lies ahead. Um, and no one has a plan for uh, for what's going to happen. And we can plan for small hiccups. What we can't plan for is um, things like the pandemic that we're having now. So the key to survival is to push through and focus on um, things like your communication, customers, cash, caring, and creativity. Um, it is, it is feeling strange and every day is a different emotion and, and it is difficult to plan. But um, it, for me anyway, it's reassuring to know that we are all in this together and, uh, and we're taking those steps as we go through. I'm learning from other, other people um, and, and that's, that's great to be in that position. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through some things, some steps um, that you can do now during lockdown um, and some things that you can plan for once you're out of lockdown and some of the longer term goals. So um, our daily activities have changed. Um, we can't do what we used to do. We have to do something new. Um, not only has our working life changed, but um, things personally have changed for us. Um, working from home, we found that quite easy to do, I have to say, and that's purely because um, we work um, on laptops day in, day out, um, and we've always been aware that what we can do, we can do from anywhere. Um, we have one of our team members who actually, for a time, she lives in France, and another part of the time she lives in the UK, so um, she's found it, and we've kind of just taken from her uh, her world if you like and we've we've come into her world so um it, it works very well for her it's worked very well for for us um i guess the only thing that we found is that uh, not having that physical um conversations uh, in the office which everybody does you know you're just having a chat about what's going on in in life in general um, we're seeing that limited travel, um, so we can only travel for essential journeys, um, getting those shopping slots and uh, a challenging finding, you know, places to buy from, um, restaurants being closed down, DIY shops closing down, gardening, we can't do any of the things that, although we're at home and we've got lots of things that we'd like to do, um, sometimes that's a challenge in itself, just um, finding the the things to buy um, to actually do those um, home improvements, let's say. Uh, and yeah, 
I absolutely, I am so glad in some respects that I haven't got little ones right now. Uh, it must be really, really difficult, I think, when you're trying to work and also um, trying to um, just homeschool as well. Um, and, you know, just having little ones around. I know, again, it's something that um, Rebecca and, uh, and Esther in our team have tried to uh, manage best they can with their partners, their husbands, and just making sure that, you know, somebody's looking after the little ones and entertaining them while they're able to work and vice versa. So, and what we've tried to do is be very flexible with that and making sure, like, you know, if, if they want to work, in an evening when, you know, little ones have gone to bed, that's absolutely fine by us. Um, it, it's just trying to find ways that we can, we can all adapt and change and work together. However, I have to say that one thing that we have seen is clearly there's more and more people online. There's lots more people that are using social media, looking at websites, doing searches on, on the internet. So, you know, this is a prime time to be uh, thinking about how you can flex your business and, and look at what you can do um, online. Um, and there is lots of things you can do. It's just a case of thinking, thinking outside the box sometimes. So some of you may have come across this before. So Maslow's hierarchy of need is uh, is something that uh, that I've known about for quite a number of years. I did psychology when I got to about 38, just purely because I was interested in it. I went to night school and thought, actually, I'll do a psychology uh, uh, A-level. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And we are what we are seeing right now is where, you know, that, back down to the bottom of that period, in uh, py that pyramid, sorry, um, in terms of looking at our safety and our security, um, looking after those uh, physiological needs. I know that's spelt wrong uh, at the bottom. It was, a, a, I took that off the internet uh, safely, by the way. But, um, you know, we are looking at that food, water, warmth, rest, um, and just keeping isolated. Um, it does feel very strange, but... Um, but it is something that we are, uh, you know, we we need to do right now, um, just to get a, a grounding, if you like, and to get ourselves some footing and some sort of something that's stable and that we can work from. Um, and imagine if this had happened ten years ago, um, you know, we wouldn't be able to deal with things in quite the same way that we are now. Uh, we're very, very lucky to have. Um, the internet for one, and I, I'm old enough to remember times when we didn't have the internet. I know that makes me sound old, but we, we, we didn't, uh, you know, and, and when emails first started and having dial up and all that sort of thing, you know, it's like, it's unbelievable when you think about now and we're complaining about slow internet speeds. I know my emails yesterday was horrendous, um, just trying to get to send an email it's just unbelievably slow and I'm sure there's other people finding the same, um, the same challenges. Um, so, you know, it does look different. Um, and, and it is kind of, how do we adapt to that? Well, you know, things like, um, this zoom, um, meeting, for example, or zoom webinar, um, is the sort of things that we're doing. We're already changing and adapting and look how quickly we have changed and adapted in just, you know, a very short period of time, three to four weeks. You know, we've seen so many people that have got their heads around Zoom, using Zoom. But there's also things like, uh, uh, you know, WhatsApp chats, WhatsApp uh, video calls. I had a video call on um, Friday with a couple of friends um, and we just, we agreed that we'd have a drink together, which again was lovely just to do that, um, you know, just getting together, um, seeing each other's face on screen. It's just lovely. Um, so, and things like uh, Skype, um, although I do think that Zoom has kind of um, superseded um, uh, Skype in a lot of respects. Uh, but there's lots of things that we're seeing. I'm sure you're the same. You know, we're seeing that we're having... Um, uh, quizzes. We have a family quiz on a Tuesday night. There's, I'm sure that a lot of people on the call today have um, engaged with the um, the the um, 
quiz that Jay runs on a Thursday night has now got over 100,000 people that join that. It has a few technical issues. Uh, I'm sure if you've been on that, you'll see, you know, he, he uh, live streams it on YouTube um, and sometimes he's talking and nobody can hear him or he's not on screen or, but actually, do you know what? Um, just that authenticity um, kind of draws you into it and I think that's the one thing that I found is that um, people are almost a little bit scared of um, stepping into that technology and into things like Zoom because they feel that they're going to mess up they feel that they're going to make, make themselves look an idiot but actually it's like anything in life we've got to just try it and, and get it wrong before we get it right I always think of like social media and any of the other some online tools for me, it's a bit like riding a bike. You just have to get on there and do it wrong and then you'll get it right. But if you don't take that first step to get it wrong, you're never going to get it right. So you just have to, you know, jump in there and, uh, and try your best and, and, and kind of get on with it. Okay, so um, some of the things that we're seeing at the moment are, um, you know, uh, lots of people making lots of different um, uh queries so um google trends is something that we use quite a bit i don't know if anybody else on the call uh, on the webinar uses google trends um i think it's something that we found to be um interesting to just have a look through you'll see there that i've just done a google trend for just the word exercise to see how many people are searching and you can see there in the last few weeks how that uh that it's increased the amount of people that are searching for exercise so you know have a think about your business and think about the keywords that um that kind of wrap around your business if you like just you know should I put a few things in there and see what comes through and see what people are searching for because then it gives you an idea of okay well what can I what can I look for what can I change what can I adapt um, I might put exercise in there and I don't know um, uh, running for example to see you know well actually what's what's the better you know, which is getting searched for more. So it's things like that. So just have a try with Google Trends. I've done a couple of other trends on here as well. So this is an interesting one, um, how to cut your own hair. Um, we're seeing lots and lots of people uh, getting their hair cut. I've seen some horrendous, I'm not going to show you any, but I've seen some horrendous examples of people having their hair cut at home. I've seen some good ones too. Um, you know, my hair needs cutting. Um, I can't go to my hairdresser right now. My hair also needs um, uh, dyeing <laughs> a lot. So it's going grey um, and I'm, I'm okay for now, but another week or two, and I don't really know what's going to happen. Then I probably won't be able to see past my past here. So, um, but yeah, just have a think about, um, you know, can you change anything? Can you uh, can you embrace anything uh, uh, in terms of the things that people are searching for on on Google right now? So do have a look at Google Trends. Um, another one we've seen is recipes. Um, I found this quite interesting because what you'll see is those peaks are the weekends and actually you would think that because we're all on lockdown and all the days are rolling into one that potentially people are just kind of everything should just be um, run along smoothly but what we've seen uh, and I've heard from other people as well is that people are still um, they've got in their head that it's the weekend so Friday night Saturday night I, I can have a drink or I can have a takeout or whatever it might be but they do still have that um, routine if you like of of a weekend process and they are looking to do recipes um, over the weekend so what can you do can you do anything that actually helps to um, to um, you know embrace that so all good so far hopefully everybody is i know we've got some questions in the chat um address i don't know whether you want to um see if we've got anything in there that needs addressing right now um not at the moment no um okay. we had some replies in q a but they were the same in the chat box so i'm just figuring out if it's a duplicate or not but at the moment we've got no questions so we can uh, move forward Carry on. okay great okay so um, yeah, so there's so many, um, so there are so many likely things that, uh, that can change right now, but, um, you know, one of the things that 
as I said earlier, we, uh, what we were looking to do is we were looking to do some webinars uh, prior to lockdown. Um, and uh, we didn't do that. Um, why? Because we didn't really need to at that point, And it's not something I felt a compelling need to, to, to do webinars. However, um, this has kind of forced ourselves into that arena, if you like, but actually it's not as scary as I thought. So um, can you evaluate what you do? Um, can you have a look and see how you can change and adapt uh, to the things that you do? Review your contracts. Have a look at the talent that's in your business. See who you've got that you could actually get um, maybe doing something slightly different. Um, are you making sure that you're using your cash wisely? Are you looking closely at your finances? I'm sure we all are right now um, to see um, how you can reduce your losses. It's time to, uh, to streamline so you can move forward without weighing uh, the weight of unnecessary cost and burden. Um, I'm sure this has been on a lot of people's minds right now is, you know, if your business is struggling right now um, and wasn't working well six months ago, maybe it's time to re-examine what you do. Um, I'm not saying that's the case for everybody. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people here that kind of go, well, it's all well and good for you. You know, you're already online. Uh, yeah, that's true. But um, what I'm hopefully going to show you is some uh, businesses that were working online, but um, they are uh, now doing some things online that's, that's helping with their business. Um, so, for example, things like manufacturing businesses, um, I'm going to showcase at least one manufacturing business that's managed to adapt and change uh, to the current climate and help out with, um, you know, the, the uh, challenges with uh, equipment for hospitals, um, sh shops and restaurants. I know we've got um, one of our uh, local um, cafe owners. I'm going to explain about him and, and how he's adapted and some other um, sort of business on there that I'll show you as we go through. Um, so Winston Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Never let a good crisis go to waste. I'd never heard that comment until two days ago when I looked it up. And actually, I thought, actually, that's a really great um, statement. Never let a good crisis go to waste. So it's about your mindset, really, and how we can change that and how we can adapt it. Um, so um, it's also a good time to take advantage of any financial resources available. If you haven't already done so, uh, find out what's available to you as a small business, as a freelancer. Um, for example, yesterday I heard that um, when an employees are required to work from home, tax relief, tax relief is available for expenses incurred as a direct result of working from home, such as additional heating and lighting. I wasn't aware of that. Um, costs that would be incurred regardless of whether an employer works at home, such as mortgage payments, water rates and council tax are excluded. However, you know, do, do have a look into that because it does mean that, you know, those, those employees can get some tax relief on that as well. Um, so once you've had a look at those and, and stabilize your business, it's time to refocus on the future. What we're going to have a look at now is five different ways um, that we can pivot your business. I have to say, I absolutely hate the word pivot. Sorry, but I do. Um, but, um, you know, it's been used quite a lot at the moment. Um, and um, we're just going to go through some examples of that. Um, as it says there, it's not the strongest of species that survives, more the most intelligent that survives. It's the one that that is most adaptable to change. So right now it's about making those changes um, and, and, and changing everything that you do. Uncertainty is the only thing that's been certain. Most businesses have been greatly disrupted and uh, uh, negatively impacted, sadly. Um, companies, CEOs, executives, entrepreneurs, employees and business owners are all facing a time of great uncertainty and what lies ahead is unclear. Entrepreneurs know that some of the best businesses come out of the worst times because times of our darkest moments, new ideas and innovations provide beacons of light. We all need to glow to a great idea and new companies, products, movements will be born out of uh, the new reality. Um, so, you know, it's about adapting and changing. Um, 
the economic impact of what we are experiencing now is unprecedented and there's still opportunities to come out stronger than ever. I was talking to somebody on a networking uh, uh, Zoom last week um, on, um, on, you know, she said she'd already just set a business up. And, and I really could empathize with that. Um, when I set up Social Progress um, in 2011, we'd just come out of a recession um, and Business Link was closing down. They decided that they didn't need business support anymore in the, the way that it was. Um, and that um, it made me kind of go, okay, well, what can I do? I literally fell into what I do. Um, and that is purely because I spotted an opportunity and somebody said to me, um, oh, you use social media quite a bit, as in LinkedIn I use quite a lot. Um, can you show me how to use it? Because I don't know how to use it. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm kind of quiet at Business Link. That's fine. It was one of our presenters. And, uh, and uh, he said, oh, when you, when you finish Business Link, can I pay you? And I was like, oh, right, okay. And that kind of got me thinking, actually could I do this I've I've done training I've worked in customer service for years and years I've done business support I'm fairly comfortable with uh, technology I was okay with social media so I thought actually I'll give it a go see how I go um, I thought well I'll give it six months if I don't make any money I can always go back into something that I've done before um, and that is literally how social progress set up um, and so LinkedIn was the first social media platform uh, that that I started using and then gradually looked at other social media platforms um, and um, a funny story for you that I know a couple of people on the call on the webinar will know um, my son who now works with us um, at Social Progress were, at the time was about 17 or 18 and he was on Facebook and uh, using Facebook and people were going, Alex, you really shouldn't be putting that on, on Facebook. And I was thinking, Oh my God, what's he putting on there? I bet I better have a look. So I actually joined Facebook to, uh, to find out what he was saying. Um, so I joined Facebook, sent him a, a friend request. He accepted my friend request and then he blocked me. So I have never seen from that day. And even to this day, there's a bug in the system that means I cannot see what Alex posts. Um, but do I need to, no, not really. I'm not, I'm not that fussed, but it just shows that actually, you know, out of something, um, a new business has developed. And, and what I was saying to this girl last week who actually was setting up in PR and marketing, you know, actually you might think that right now is a bad time to set up, but it's probably not. It's probably the best time to set up because again, lots of people online, they, you know, need your services and it might seem like it's a challenge, but some of the best businesses have set up, um, when, um, when we're in a downturn, if you like. So, so yeah, it's scary. It is difficult. It's not an easy process, but I know lots of other people that have done the same where they've just kind of gone, actually, I'm going to try it because what have I got to lose? And if I don't try it, I'm never going to know. So it's now time to experiment and, and create and, and innovate, uh, innovate uh, with your business. Um, of course, it's, it's easier to say that than, than do it. But, you know, um, there is things you can do and, uh, and it, is, it is worth at least trying it. If you don't try, you'll never know really, will you? Okay, so a couple of examples. So, you know, um, number one, um, embrace digital. And we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, so embracing digital, um, I put three different um, online platforms there where you can upload your content into those. So if you do um, courses, for example, and this is uh, one of our clients, we have a client who does, um, uh, they do martial arts uh, courses. And obviously at the moment, they can't do martial arts courses. So what they're doing at the moment is filming all that content and putting it up onto Thinkific um, and, um, and using that as a platform so that people can go onto that platform. They can find their courses, they can register for them and, and away they go. So there's lots of different courses that they're putting up on there. Another one of those is Teachable. And I'd heard of Teachable, I'd not heard of Thinkific. Um, and I was speaking to somebody in America on, well, last week, last Wednesday, actually, 
and uh, Patreon is an American platform. Um, but what we have got at the moment is that ability to market our um, courses anywhere in the world. So what a fantastic opportunity that we wouldn't have had before. So, you know, um, just think about your business and what kind of business you are. Um, can you deliver something um, in an electronic way, embrace that digital technology? Uh, another example is a boutique um, that is now looking to uh, launch their products online. There's never been a better time to uh, launch your products online. Um, Shopify is giving businesses a 90-day trial, free trial of Shopify. So if you have a website and it's not an e-commerce website, you can actually make that change uh, to make it an e-commerce site. Um, Again, another example of this is um, a, a boutique in our village in Honley, um, Chain Reaction, who um, primarily sold clothes in the store, but now obviously they can't, their store's closed. So they've transferred everything onto online and they've, um, luckily they've just launched a new website um, and, and that's an e-commerce website. And so people can actually buy um, their products and you know clothing from from that um sort of portal um another example is an interior designer company uh, who started offering um, consultations through zoom um so they've set it up so that they can actually share like i'm doing with you now share my screen so they can share some of the uh, information that the you know the mood boards and everything so again another way that you can maybe uh, use online platforms and an estate agent that's embraced uh, a virtual presence by doing like 3d tours doing facebook lives virtual walkthroughs uh, and even featuring homes on tiktok i don't know if anybody's using tiktok not me i've tried can't get my head around it. Maybe I'm too old. I have no idea. Um, be useful to hear if anybody else is using TikTok and find it useful. It looks very much fun, but from a business perspective, um, I, I haven't found any great examples yet of how it's being used. If you've got one, if your business is using it, please do put it in the, in the questions and answers. We'd love to hear how you find in using TikTok um, and, and anything else like that. You know, any useful tips you've got, any examples you've come across, please do put them in the questions and answers. We'd love to share that with all the, uh, the participants and the, and the uh, attendees today. So do pop those in the, uh, in the questions and answers. Okay, um, another example of Embracing Digital is um, a local restaurant to us, uh, Meze. And what they've done is obviously they can't have people coming into the restaurant anymore. So what they've set up is a takeout and curbside service. Um, so you ring up, you order what you want from that menu. It's a limited menu, but it's a meze. Um, so little uh, tapas um, bits and pieces. So you can order what you like. They have got some set menus as well. Um, and then you just ring up, uh, they'll give you a booking slot and uh, you just go down and pick up a curbside. So they're making sure that they're social distancing, um, but still able to trade because they've changed and adapted the way that they're working. So another great example of a business that's adapted. Um, and uh, another one, and I know that Oliver and Katie are on the call, so uh, a wave to Oliver and Katie. Um, great to see you here. Um, thanks for joining us, Oliver and Katie. Um, what they've done, which I think is fantastic, I haven't managed to get there yet, uh, but on a Saturday morning now, because they can't open the coffee shop, they've set up a virtual coffee shop. And so what they do is they encourage people to grab a coffee at home, uh, you know, put your kettle on, put your coffee on, um, and uh, and just join join in a conversation, so almost like a very informal networking platform. Um, last Saturday, I believe that what they did is they um, they got one of one or two of their suppliers on. So Dark Woods is um, the coffee that they use. So they encouraged Dark Woods to come on the call and and just share a little bit of knowledge if you like about um, dark woods probably how it was set up i would imagine um but again a great way to show how what they're doing is keeping themselves in front of their audience and keeping themselves uh, known to people so 
um, another great way of, uh, of how you can adapt. Um, another one that I've heard of, um, not on the slides, but um, we ha also have a local jewellery shop, uh, Zebra, uh, Zebra Jewellery, and they do jewellery and gifts. And what they've done now is you can, um, you can go onto their social media or you can ring them up and you can pick a card. I did this the other week. Uh, it was my uh, best friend's 60th birthday. I couldn't get out to get a card. So I rang them up and I said, I need a 60th card. And they said, do you like it kind of flowery or not so flowery? Like, not really flowery. I'm not a flowery person. Uh, so they chose when they told me what it was like. They told me how much it would be. They took my payment over the phone and they actually got a stamp and they posted it for me. So fantastic, fantastic service. And it, again, it's just a way of adapting and changing to make sure that they are still able to support their customers and keep in front of their customers and keep them uh, keep them in, in people's minds a great way another one that we've come across is uh, again something that I know um, um, Alan uh, sorry Alistair uh, Rachel and Alistair set up Rachel's kitchen Alistair actually used to be uh, an insurance broker and he'd always had a passion for uh, cooking so he went away learned how to do it and then set up um, what they do is um, they do um, catering, so uh, catering service. They don't have a physical presence, a physical location, but they do outside catering. And what Alice has done and, and Rachel is um, on a Wednesday now, they do, um, as it says there, their COVID distraction. So they uh, encourage people, they put this out, um, these are the ingredients you need to get, and then they'll do a Facebook Live and they'll showcase um what you can make um which is fantastic and they've got loads of people that are engaging with that because there's lots of people that are uh, baking at home at the moment so when i spoke well i messaged um Al alistair earlier in the week uh, yesterday actually and and what he said is they've done the online cooking sessions and now because of that they've now been hired by a company in Leeds to do three live video sessions for their 150 employees um, they're selling sticky toffee pudding to the local village shop and uh, they're providing a Saturday night delivery takeaway service and now even considering vegetable boxes and dessert delivery. Um, for Alistair, actually, him and, uh, and Rachel, who are a couple, they've had twins um, probably in the last six months, I would think. So for them, it's actually nice for them to kind of take their foot off the gas a little bit and just spend some time with the twins, but also still have some work and still keep in people's minds. Um, so, you know, that demand for content is higher than ever. You know, there's lots of opportunities out there. Um, it's definitely worth embracing um, the digital uh, sphere and getting um, in, get into groups with that. Okay, everybody so far, anybody got any questions? Anybody got any comments? We've only had one comment in the questions and answers. Do we have an agenda on what's being covered in this webinar, please? I haven't put an agenda together um, and that's purely because I put it together on Monday. Um, and so I apologize for that. Um, so, um, uh, we can uh, send you out an agenda afterwards. I'm sure that can be arranged, uh, but um, we haven't got a physical agenda for it. And I apologize for that. Um, it's just um, hints and tips as we go through. Uh, we've got no other questions and answers at the moment, unless Andreas, you've got any that's in the chat facility that you need to cover? No, Janet, I'm afraid no, no questions at the moment. That's fine. <laughs> no problem, that's good. Um, okay, so, on to our uh, next section. So can you realign your product offering? So again, uh, probably not, I mean, I've seen quite a lot about this on, on LinkedIn, um, where the Leeds City Region uh, Enterprise Partnership in, in our region anyway, have been ask for, asking for people to put themselves forward to, um, to you know, make some uh, personal protective equipment, PPE. Um, I think you've got to be a certain size of business in all honesty to make that shift. Uh, we have got a client actually who we manage the social media for who are um, their project managers within um, 
the chemical and manufacturing and construction industries. And we kind of said to them, actually, this is a great opportunity for you to just pivot what you do, change what you do, and just uh, maybe connect with some of those businesses that are looking to do something differently, but they probably don't know how to go about it. So um, again, another example there. So, you know, can you leverage your, your current assets and resources and align them with what your customers' current need, current, with your customers' current needs? Uh, what could you do to change to fulfill those needs? Um, businesses of all sizes are already making successful changes in order to fill different customer needs and continue to operate. For example, cosmetic manufacturers have um, switched to making hand sanitizers and leveraging their expertise and product capability. Uh, large clothing manufacturers such as Gap, Nike and Zara are now um, using their factories to make gowns and masks and scrubs. So again, another great example of how things are changing. So ask, ask yourself, uh, what do your, what do you need to, you know, what do people need right now? And can you change anything? Can you, can your company fulfill those responsibilities? If your business is uh, unable to operate, is there a way that you can uh, change in some way to, to fulfill that need? Again, an example of that is, um, a client um, that's working with, enterprise, sorry, they're working with uh, Adventure um, and we work with Adventure, so this is how we know of them. So uh, Harida Healthcare, um, they make beds um, clearly as it shows there, but what they've uh, done is um, changed what they do and how they do that process to fulfill a need for those there's 500 new beds in the Nightingale Hospital in Harrogate that's been opened it was yesterday actually opened by Captain Tom Moore um, and as that LinkedIn um, uh, post there uh, shows uh, what they've done is uh, they've changed what they're doing and they've had support from the Leeds uh, City Region LEP um, to showcase how they can ramp up that production. So a great example of how a business has kind of got in there, changed what they do, and, and just made sure that they are um, changing um, some of the processes they put, they put in place. As it says, we're all in it together. Um, right now, it is about being real, authentic, transparent, um, and showcasing how you are serving your customers the best you can. Um, and, um, you know, for some, for us, some of our clients are on pause, uh, you know, when, when lockdown happened, we probably manage about 30 different account managed clients. So that means we manage their social media on their behalf. Um, we've had maybe about five of those that have put us on hold. That's not, that's not stopping completely. That's just like, you know, we don't really know where we're going right now. Can we just pause things? Um, whilst we kind of evaluate and see where we're going. And some of those are still on pause, yet we had one on Monday who said, actually, I've had a look at it and I can see that there's lots of things that are happening online and I want to be in that space rather than not. So can we continue? Can we continue on a, on a reduced budget? Um, and that's totally fine with us. Yeah, we're honest with them. We're helping them. We're working the best that we can. We're aware that not, exam not every single business can just continue as they were. Some can, some can't. Some have had to stop altogether. Some have reduced. It just depends. We've got a couple of clients um, where their products come from uh, China. One uh, provide wetsuits for triathletes. Uh, the other um, provide laptops. The laptops that I'm using now, Dell laptops. Um, and both of those businesses get their um, equipment from, um, from China. Um, and they just literally can't get that information, right? They can't get the goods. So therefore, they can't work in the same way. However, what they have done is kind of gone, all right, well, we can't get new goods. But what we can do is just keep ourselves in that space so people don't forget us. So we're still actually going to put some stuff out on social media. Um, but um, but we're, you know, we're not able to fulfill the requirements as we as we had before. But, you know... I, that's the thing. I think it's about being honest with people, showing that you, you know, that you, you are being, you know, you are struggling with certain things. Actually, people want to support businesses that are open and honest about it. Um, we're the same. We're not here to to rip anybody off. We're not here to 
you know, we, we wouldn't tie anybody into a contract. If things have changed for businesses, we'll work with them, we'll adapt, we'll do the best that we can to support those clients. Because at the end of the day, we want those clients to come back to us at the end of it all. And they will do if we support them in the right way. If we don't and we're, you know, kind of go, no, well, no, we tie you into such and such a contract, which we've never done. Uh, those are not going to come back to us. So, you know, we, we look at our customers um, and we, we try and support them as best we can. Um, we've, um, you know, we've got one client who is a day nursery, for example, and, uh, and they, they clearly can't continue um, because they just haven't got the children in the day nursery and they've had to furlough quite a lot of their staff. Um, however, again, great for them. What they've done is they, they emailed us, not this last weekend gone, but the email bef uh, the weekend before, and they emailed us and just said, just to let you know where we are, this is where we are right now. However, I'm already pre-planning for September. And what I want to do is I want to do some advertising throughout the summer so that hopefully when when September comes and we're at that point where we're getting new children coming in, we're ready for that. Fantastic news. And I'm so glad that they're thinking in that way about, you know, looking at the, you know, what, what's happening in the future rather than just going, okay, well, we're in lockdown and we can't do anything at all. So, you know, one thing that we've tried to do is just, you know, whenever we've got messages like that, we've responded to it. We've said, you know, we'll work with the best we can. We'll do whatever we can to 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 help you and they appreciate that i think that that's the thing it's like you know that trust that relationship matters um we've also bizarrely enough we picked up new clients um in this process right now and i think part of that is because we're still showcasing that we're here we're working we're you know we're working from home but we're still working so we had a, a client that sells um voip telephones for example and actually they've realized that right now there's a lot of pe people that are wanting um you know telephones that they can literally unplug from the office take home and plug in at the at home which is like exactly what i've got please don't ring while we're on this uh, webinar but there you go so um that's exactly what we've done is we've just taken our phone from the office brought it home so when i answer the phone and anybody that's on this uh webinar if you ring me now you're in big trouble because i'll know it'll be um so you know it's just it's just those it's how you can quickly adapt to any given situation okay so um don't stop talking to your customers, as I've already indicated there. You know, um, we can't sell to people. And what we don't want to do is, is, um, is start trying to sell our products. But we can remind people that we're there. Um, and we, we want to be, and you should too, want to be the first business that um, when we are able to, people are able to, you know, get back to not some sort of normality or they need our services, we want to be the first business that they think of um, to buy from. We've always had that mindset. We've always had the mindset of we're not here to use, particularly with social media, we're not here to um to actually uh, sell to people, we're here to promote what we do, not sell what we do. Okay, so um, so you know, do do have a think about that and see how you can change and adapt. Uh, for example, what we try and do is we share, you know, we showcase some of the things that we're we're, we're getting up to. Um, this is a post that we put up when we first started working from home. Uh, we just thought we'd have a bit of fun with it. Um, experts recommend sticking to your daily routine even while you're working from home so we just all had a picture taken of us so that's myself driving to work with the top down I've got a soft top car um, I love my mini uh, we've got Becky on the right there who's usually stuck in traffic because she's coming over from Leeds and she gets frustrated with all the traffic jams on the uh, motorway um, Esther's forever forgetting the keys and never knows which key it is to get in the office um, and then Alex um, drives like a madman getting to work. So, so those, we just kind of put a bit of fun on it, really. We tried to put a fun spin on it just to, um, to keep people, you know, just engaged with what we're doing and wanting to come back and see, uh, see what we're up to. We also put the next um, video, hopefully it'll pay, play out over Easter. Again, we used online technology to try and have a bit of fun with it and just keep in the mind of our clients. We got 50 people that like this on Facebook alone, so we had some good engagement. Oh, you're not going to play. All right, okay. There we go.
So, yeah, um, just about having a bit of fun. It doesn't have to be all about selling. It's just about, you know, keeping engaged with your customers um, at the end of the day. Um, another example is, again, one of our clients, actually, Ammo Group, who do, um, they do outside um, uh, garden awnings and garden canopies and uh, uh, outside uh, pagodas, uh, outdoor living space. They also do, um, you know, uh, garage doors and shutters for uh, commercial use as well um, they were aware that they couldn't actually all the their, you know all the team is furloughed and so what they did is they just got everybody to take a picture do a little bit of a screenshot you know uh, and and we put that up on social media and again they had a great response from that and it's just showing a bit of personality and a bit of you know we're all in it together uh, and just you know being a bit honest really so um, so I think again another great example of how you can actually just keep you know keep out there um and just making sure that people are um aware of you again i've been on a a networking uh, uh sort of uh, meeting this morning um, um i'll show you in a moment we we go to uh, bni uh, business networking international networking and one of the members on there who's um an electrician he's actually worked out that right now they do uh, compliance testing um and so there's a lot of empty premises and right now is probably the best time to do compliance testing because there's nobody in the building so there's nobody to kind of be disrupting so a lot of venues hospitality um those kind of venues that potentially are always struggling to find a time to get that compliance done it's a brilliant time for them just to get themselves out there so another great example um and then um although i haven't got it on today we have a, a graphic designer in our in our group um and and he started doing um zoom background so you'll see that some people have got some really fancy zoom backgrounds i've got one but i won't share with it uh, with you today um but again you know he started doing those from a graphic design point of view um 35 pounds and it just means that he's actually doing something that means it can get some business coming in but it's something useful to people that are on lots of zoom calls right now so again another example of of how people are adapting and changing and just finding new markets that they can they can work with um another one of our clients um so uh, bronte water um <clears throat> one of the things that they they are still trading but um they're not as as active because a lot of places that they did supply to are closed down however they still do um supply to um the likes of supermarkets and nhs so hospitals um and what they've done is put up a post that says you know uh, short-term water cooler leasing so you know you can you can uh, just lease it for a little while a great time for them to you know just get a few uh, short-term leases out there get people trying the uh, water coolers and the weather gets warmer we you know they might find that they've got more of these um, in demand so another example of how uh, businesses are changing and adapting and then uh, again, one of our clients, um, GQA, they do um, qualifications for the construction uh, industry and fenestration, so uh, glass fitters, window fitters, that kind of thing. Um, and so what they've done is their logo is normally green, and so they've changed the logo to blue um, and just put, you know, supporting our NHS. And this is a time to showcase how you are supporting and engaging with those key workers and, and carers and just, you know, um, getting involved in that in any way that you can. So uh, another great example. Um, one of the things that we put up today is about um, social distancing. We've seen a few actually um, where businesses are showcasing their logo in a social distance way. So I love the VW one at the bottom. Thanks for keeping your social distance. And so they've split out the, the VW. Uh, same with KitKat and ColorCube is a local business to us. And again, they're, they're three um, sort of, I don't know what they are really, but um, they're triangles or whatever are normally all in together and they've just split them out and we've put a post out today as well we've taken our social progress logo and the petals we've animated that so it's kind of coming out so it's showing that we are not only are we social progress but we are social distancing as well so 
uh, again, great examples. And the one that I absolutely love, the one that is the favorite for me, is this one on the left-hand side, uh, uh, how they're showing almost like a, it's a bit, I mean, I, I kind of looked at it and thought, oh gosh, um, Guinness should have done this really because Guinness are usually quite creative with this sort of thing but they've been beaten to it I think by this one um, but just showing that social distancing so again again great examples of how businesses are embracing what's happening currently but showcasing how they're supporting that as well so you know can you do anything around that to actually support um, your client base and people that are you know uh, around you at this moment in time. So ask yourself, how can you best engage and communicate with your customers now? Uh, what can I do to encourage my current customers to support my business? And what are other companies doing to engage customers that I could also be doing or could help my business? So, you know, um, just try and figure out ways that you can adapt. Hopefully, by some of the examples that I've shown you there, some of the live examples, it's maybe made you think a little bit differently, um, you know, but uh, have a think about those. Be proactive. Ask yourself, you know, how can I help my customers? Um, check how they're doing. It's so simple, but it's something we don't do enough. It's just kind of, I did it this morning before this webinar. I just messaged one of our clients and kind of said, you know, um, I'm just checking how things are. If there's anything I can help you with, nothing to do with the work that we do with you, you know, on a paid basis. But if there's anybody in my network that you'd like an introduction to, just let me know. I'm happy to introduce you. Um, I've always done that anyway. So it's nothing to do with uh, particularly being in this situation. It's just something that I think is really important. Um, so offer your help and support and find ways that you can challenge that are challenges uh, that others are facing so you know work out how you can help those people um another another one to uh, to look at is who you can collaborate with um there is an african proverb as it says on screen there if you want to go fast go if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go farther go together so it's about coming together and I think this is really important right now uh, looking at who you can collaborate with um, not just it might not be particularly to to work with but sometimes and I've often found this in the past anyway is um, you know when, when you talk to other people somebody will say to you I've, why do you not do such and such and it's something that you've probably never even thought of but it's amazing how somebody else in a a different business can look at your business and come up with an idea that you've never even thought of. And we're all in that, we're all in that uh, mindset, you know, me, me as well, you know, there's certain things that I've kind of gone, uh, you know, never thought about. And then somebody else said to me, well, why don't you do X, Y, Z? For example, when I started out, I was only ever doing training. I wasn't managed. We weren't going to manage social media for businesses, but then I got so many people asking me, you know, do you manage social media for other businesses? Well, I like, no, we don't. But then I just thought, do you know what? Let's give it a go. And, you know, that was like five, six years ago. And we've never looked back. Um, that's only because people asked me to do it. It's not because I kind of went, right, we're going to do social media for other people. It was just because we were constantly getting asked for that service. So, you know, is the ways that you can collaborate, is the new ideas, new synergies uh, for creating new business partnerships? Um, you know, just have a look and see if there is anything that you can do in terms of collaboration right now. Um, just keep speaking to people at the end of the day. Um, Again, I've already mentioned it to you. Um, as I said, we, uh, I am a BNI member. I go to BNI um, on a Wednesday morning. Um, it's a networking organization. It's not for everybody, uh, but there's never been a better time to be a visitor. It doesn't cost you anything at all. And you'll meet, you know, 30 plus businesses that are actually uh, proactively looking to grow and engage their business. And they want to support other businesses too. Um, think of all those people on that screen right now as your sales team because they're all listening to one person that's telling the rest of those people, this is what kind of work I am looking for. If you know of anybody that's interested in this service, I'd really welcome an introduction. Um, and it works really well for me. I've been a member now for the last seven years. Um, it's worked really well for my business. And not only does it bring me, um, you know, warmed up referrals, if you like, but 
there are people in that group, for example, if I had an issue with insurance, for example, or I had a client that wasn't paying me, we've got a solicitor in that uh, group, we've got an insurance person in that group, we've got a web developer, we've got a graphic designer, a printer. It's all these things that actually, you know, some great uh, people in there that can give me some really good sound advice um, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, they, they're business people that just want to support other businesses. So, you know, if you're interested in coming along to that, let me know. I'm happy to, uh, to uh, get you registered as a visitor uh, to that. Um, again, as I say, if you've never tried it, um, do try it. It's a perfect opportunity right now because it's not going to cost you anything at all. Another one that we uh, we are involved in is uh, something called MY Network, Mid Yorkshire Network, uh, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. There's no cost to join this at all. Uh, we usually work. We usually meet the third Wednesday of each month, um, and it's usually nine o'clock till eleven o'clock. But whilst we're in this position of lockdown, what we've done is we've changed that to just ten till eleven. Uh, it's a bit of a free for all, I have to say, but it's fun. It's engaging, and we just we every everybody gets a chance to explain who they are. But there's no sales pitch in it at all. It's just a case of building relationships, getting to know each other. Um, and and just collaborating uh, with one another. Uh, another great example of collaboration is um, we have a butchers in our village that, where my office is, and um, they identified that um, they could sell. Uh, they don't do green green grocery products, but there is a green grocers in the next village up. And so what they did is they kind of talked to each other and said, "Well, how about we do something together where we do a delivery service where people can order their meat and they can also order their greens, and we can have all that delivered together." Um, and it's it's gone so well. They're delivering. Um, up into Newcastle, down to London. They're having some great uh, results with that. And that's just because they've embraced it and looked at how they can actually work together collaboratively. So again, you know, is there anybody you can collaborate with? Um, ask yourself that. So who could you collaborate with? Uh, what businesses do I have synergies with and common, uh, common customer profiles? What current partnerships would be mutual or beneficial to your business? Um, so... Um, have a think about that. Um, number five on the steps is um, try, fail and try again. There's never been a better time to just try something different. It doesn't really matter if it fails. It's now time to experiment and find out what works and what doesn't. Um, quickly launching new ideas. Um, you know, it might be that it's minimal investment and you can focus on what works, what doesn't. Um, I'm not going to say that everything works well. You know, we've tried stuff and it hasn't worked. Uh, not now, but in the past, you know, it's a difficult one. We've also had a, somebody that came to us this week who wanted to, us to develop an app. Um, and whilst the app would be a great uh, um, resource right now, there's a high cost to it and they didn't have the finance to put behind that. And they didn't want to kind of spend a lot of time finding that finance to actually invest in that. Um, so, you know, there is, there is opportunities right now, um, but it is worth having a look and seeing how you can change. Um, and yeah, I expect to fail. You, you know, you are going to try some stuff and some stuff is going to work and some stuff is going to fail. But, you know, the best people in, in, in this life that are entrepreneurial are the sort of people that try and fail. Have a look at what's selling right now. So um, interestingly enough, things that are selling are things like yoga mats, beer trimmers of all things, loungewear. So can you sell these instead of some of the things that you were selling? Uh, I don't know. It's not something that we look at. But if you look at the figures on the bottom there, kettlebells saw a 419% jump in consumer demand. That's just in the last couple of weeks. So again, uh, you know, some great examples there. So um Okay, anyone got any questions at this point? Um, I think we've got a couple of questions in the questions and answers. Uh, some excellent examples here of how businesses have pivoted. Do you have any more advice for teams, individuals to work more effectively from home? Um, you know, I, I guess for me, the one thing that we've seen is making sure that we are uh, keeping up to date with each other. W one thing that we use a lot um, on a day-to-day -day basis with our team is we, we communicate through WhatsApp. 
So we just, we were often, you know, it might be that first thing in the morning, we might take a picture and put it up on WhatsApp and go with a cup of coffee and go, morning, how is everybody? That kind of thing. So it's just a short burst or something, but it just means we're keeping in touch with each other. Um, but we do set up those regular um, touch points. As I say, we've got them on a Tuesday and a, on a Friday morning now. They're only for half an hour, but it's just a case of, uh, just making sure that we're connected. I have actually said to the team as well, you know, if you if you want to work while we're chatting, that's absolutely fine. I'm, it's not a business meeting. We're not going to get like, well, you need to pay attention. It's just a case of touch points uh, for for that process and stuff. So, but if anybody else has got any great examples, we'd love to hear those as well. Uh, best tool to manage your Instagram from a PC. Uh, yeah, there is there is a tool that you can manage. You can go to, um, there's a Chrome extension um, and I think it's desktop for Instagram. Um, so you can manage it from your PC. It is limited. Um, there are some things you can do on there and there are some things you can't because at the end of the day, Instagram is first and foremost, it's, um, it's a device app where all the other social media platforms were first and foremost designed for browser interface, but then an app was developed so you could you can have it on your phone. With Instagram, it was completely the other way around. Um, Instagram was developed first and foremost as an app. And then what they're looking to do is um, make sure that it's a bit more accessible, if you like, through PC. Um, one thing that Facebook and Instagram, well, Facebook, who own Instagram, have uh, sort of said, and this was probably about two years ago now, um, is that um, they recognize that most people access their social media through a device. And so Facebook uh, made the viewpoint that, okay, well, if everybody is using uh, their mobile and devices for, uh, for managing, looking at social media, um, therefore we need to be um, working in that environment first and foremost. So Mark Zuckerberg actually canceled um, all of the meetings that were scheduled in through a browser application. And he made everybody rebook those uh, over a two week period through um, devices. And so what they did is they changed everything that they did to be mobile first. And that's purely because they wanted to experience it the same as their audience would experience things. So again, that's an example of how a business and a big business has just pivoted and changed and made sure that what they're doing is changing things to be more adaptable and in tune, if you like, with their clients. So that's the only platform that I know of. If anybody knows of any others, uh, please do feel free to share those. But that's the only one that I know of that uh, that works well. Um, it's a frustration, I have to say, frustration for us as well. Uh, we'd love to be able to work much better through uh, a browser interface rather than through a device. Um, we find it as challenging as, uh, as, as other people. Okay, um, so that nicely brings us on to social media, actually. So, but do you know start? You know, hopefully you've started writing your takeaways and uh, and you've got down your plus points, as in you know what what nice things have happened to you in the last week. Uh, start to think positively. Uh, the more you can think positively, the better positive outcomes you'll get. Um, so, as I said before, there's more and more people on social media right now. Um, and so, um, you know, the uh, mission statements for the different social media platforms are on screen there um, about connecting the world professionally to make them more productive and successful. Facebook, uh, giving people the power to build communities and bring the world closer together. Uh, Instagram to capture and share the world's moments and uh, Twitter to give everyone the power to create and share ideas, information instantly without barriers. Um, so, you know, even while we're in this lockdown, they're still relevant um, and, you know, start to think about how you can change uh, and adapt into this. Uh, one thing that we did recently, I would probably come to it uh, later on as well, is uh, we started to write down our core values and our mission statements. So if you haven't done so already, um, it might be an ideal opportunity to just have a look at those and think, how can I, how can I change those? How can I, um, you know, what do we stand for? What's, what are our core values? What are our core mission statements in life? So as we've already said, you know, it's about staying visible. It's about staying positive. It's about being on social media and, uh, and people seeing you. Um, if you, you know, one of the things that we've done a lot more of in the last couple of weeks is um, write more blogs. 
get more content on the website, making sure that we're sharing those out onto social media that's driving traffic back to our website. Uh, we are continuing to network uh, online. Uh, we're making sure that we're being seen um, and being visible. So, um, you know, make sure you are still there. Uh, it's about acknowledging the situation. You can't just ignore it. We're all in it together, as I've said. Um, let people know if you're open, closed, working from home, what's going on and pin the most important information that you've got to the top of your social media. Um, you know, it, it's just about keeping going. Um, but one thing that we noticed, and you might want to check your own, on Google, if you uh, Google your own business, you'll get the Google knowledge graph to the um, right-hand side of your screen. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, what we noticed was that ours said, uh, hours of service may differ due to COVID-19, and it also said that we were closed. We were not closed. The office might be closed, but we were absolutely open for business. Um, so what I did is I contacted Google and updated my Google for uh, Google My Business record. And um, I said, we are open. Um, and what I'd noticed in this last week or two is that it's now changed and it says hours or services may differ. So it just shows us open. Um, but it, the wording is slightly different now. So check your own. Make sure that you're not showing as closed because people may assume that you've just all gone and, you know, you furloughed all your staff and there's nobody there uh, working in the background. So do have a look at that um, and see if you can uh, change and adapt yours. Keep communicating. Keep sharing content. Uh, do so from credible sources. Um, I manage a local community group. It's nothing to do with my business as social progress. It's more to do with me um, engaging with the local community. Um, and what we do, um, we make sure that we are only sharing content from credible sources. Uh, we found that initially when we went into lockdown, there were a lot of people sharing a lot of content from lots of different places and we couldn't verify those. So what we decided to do is we'd only share them from places like the BBC, World Health, um, World Health Organization and uh, places like that. So NHS uh, government websites. Do show empathy, show that we're all in this together and recognize people's emotions as I indicate at the beginning uh we are up and down um everybody is on a different um you know different day they're in different um mood swings if you like uh, and that was quite apparent from what i asked you to do at the beginning of the webinar um but you know trying to be mindful um i'm not a big i don't post a, a lot of motivational quotes um however i do think it's it is important to remind ourselves sometimes um, I do try um, wherever possible to think positively with my mindset. So a great attitude becomes a great mood, which becomes a great day, which becomes a great year, which becomes a great life. So fantastic quote. Um, and, uh, you know, just keep, keep, uh, keep going with that. Okay. Still all good. I think we are. So we'll keep going. We'll get some questions at the end if there is any. Um, so what can we do now and in the future? Well, we can keep on brand and keep relevant. Um, please avoid blatant marketing messages. You know, it's not about selling right now. It's just about communicating and keeping in tune with people. Um, think of your short term changes that you can make, but try to look at what might or could you could do in the future. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot we can plan right now, but we don't know how that's going to pan out. So, um, you know, think about what you can do now, but what, what's it going to look like in the future? Um, you know, try and encourage, uh, get behind certain things. So like we posted a picture out yesterday, we just, um, we're aware of the different uh, days of the days of the month. So yesterday was National Tea Day, for example. I'm sure that Yorkshire Tea will have put something out as well. I didn't actually see, but they will have done. Um, and so all we did is we put something up on our social media and matched the tea to the tea drinker. And we got people to um, decide whose tea was whose. Um, and all we're doing is just trying to build that online, online relationship, which is what we've always tried and tried to do um you know have a bit of fun with it at the end of the day you know it's not all about selling it's about getting your brand and your brand identity uh, and your personality out through your social media 
I love this idea. Um, this is something I came across. You can see in the bottom middle screen there, um, there is a llama. Yes, there's a llama on a Zoom um, call. Um, so somebody has set up a business where you can hire a llama for your Zoom meetings. What an entrepreneur um, that is. I've also seen a guy who set up um, a suit that you literally, um, you pick up, you wrap it around your neck and it shows one arm from here. So if you have to have your arm on screen, you've got a full sleeve, but on this one, on the other side, it's just a half, half a screen, half a, a sleeve. So again, you know, it's people that have actually looked at what they can do and think, right, how can I change? How can I adapt? What can I do differently? Um, so there's some great examples out there. So I love that one of Alama. I think it's a fantastic idea. How how busy the llama is, I've no idea. So you might do another one where it's, I don't know, um, hire a, I don't know, elephant or something. I've no idea, but yeah. Um, so some short-term actions, keep in touch with your customers, suppliers, colleagues, collaborators, wider network. It is important right now. Work out how you can help all of those above. Uh, what hints, tips, and nuggets can you give out uh, from your net to your network? Can you do some blogs? Have you got some resources? I know I've done some stuff for free. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we've interviewed um, some people in our network and we've just put some webinars out. Um, it's not about us. It's about sharing some useful information, but also it gets that person out um, in front of um, an audience and it gets us out there as well. gives me some... Um, uh, added um, use for using Zoom as well. So it's getting me more familiar with it and putting myself outside my comfort zone. Um, review any scheduled content you've got. So if you use something like Hootsuite or TweetDeck, uh, just be mindful that that might have changed. So, um, you know, do you need to change anything on there? Uh, check any days of the month for relevance and appropriateness. Um, one that we try and engage with is uh, next week. It's next Tuesday. I think it's pay it forward day. Um, so pay it forward day, if you're not familiar with that, is um, you do three good deeds for three people. Um, and all you do is you ask them to pay it forward and do three good deeds for three other people. So, you know, a, a, again, a lovely thing to get involved with right now. So maybe you could have a think about what three things you could do. It doesn't have to be something massive. I did it a couple of years ago and all I did is um, I just went into the sandwich shop that we use on a regular basis and I just took them some chocolate in because I just thought actually, you know, nobody ever thinks to, to give them something. So I thought I'll just take some chocolate, chocolate in and, and, and I did that and they were absolutely blown away. So it's the little things in life, isn't it really, that, that make a big difference. Um, and just um, keep checking daily with things that you're putting out there and just, um, you know, be a, uh, aware of what's happening out in the world. In terms of planning for the long term, uh, what can you do right now to be ready for the future? Um, you know, use facts, figures, data, look at digital insights to look at, you know, make informed decisions for your commercial growth. How can you change and adapt? Um, focus on your online community, maybe asking them, you know, what is it that you need? How, you know, is there anything that you haven't got right now that we could help with? Uh, and stay, stay true to your uh, core values. These are our core values. We set them at the beginning of the year. We sat down as a team. It's not something that I've um, put together. Uh, we put them together as a team. Um, so, and they're behind my screen right now that I'm looking at. Um, I've got them on a, on a, on a, a piece of paper in my office at home uh, and you know our core values are to have passion for the social progress ban brand to work with honesty integrity to have fun and to be proud of what we do and I hope that that's come across in the things that we've talked about in this you know that is our core values and and our team all feel the same that's exactly what we want to come across as so so what will the future look like for you? Um, have your customers changed? Have their challenges changed? Uh, what new priorities might they have and how can you help with new ways of working? Ask yourself these questions. Ask them. Look out there and see how other people are adapting. See how other people in your industry are changing and adapting to those uh, particular needs. Um, there is lots of opportunity out there, but we do have to change. So, you know, we can't, one thing that I've seen is a few businesses that have kind of gone, I'll deal with it when we get through, uh, you know, COVID-19 and we're out of lockdown. 
sadly they're going to be too late you have to look at how you can change now you might not make those changes but if you don't actually sit down and and at least think about those um you know you can't expect it to be the same when we when we kind of get out the other side whenever that will be um do speak to your customers ask them How's things going? What, you know, what challenge are you facing? What are you getting up to? Listen to the needs, speak to your team. You know, team are great um, ways of coming up with ideas. You know, it's something that, again, we're very passionate about is just making sure I don't have all the answers, um, but collectively we can come up with some great answers to, to what our clients are looking for. Um, understand what's going on and, and see how you can adapt to that situation um so in terms of your social media actions um you know get out there social listening just listening to what's going on check your news feed check your linkedin and uh, facebook groups um a great time right now to just evaluate and review those are you in the right groups are there some groups that you need to just uh, get out of leave um, and just scrap are there some new groups that you need to be in um, some of the groups that we encourage people to be in are groups that are one to do with your industry uh, two to do with your local network and three to be in groups where your potential client base are um, so have a look at your groups maybe see how you can change those um, and see what's going on see what other people are talking about um, do follow hashtags, so hashtags such as COVID-19, coronavirus, coronavirus UK and coronavirus uh, outbreak. Um, there's loads of others, um, but do have a look and, uh, and see what's being talked about um, and, you know, um, just follow those hashtags on all your social media platforms. All the different social media platforms now, whether that's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, they all um, embrace hashtags now. So, and they're just search terms, if you're not familiar with that. So just um, kind of get on there and have a look at that. Um, another great example or a great tool that we use is Hootsuite. Um, and there's so much more to Hootsuite than people actually realize. Um, Hootsuite at the moment are providing free access to its professional platform for non-profit uh, organizations and small businesses. Um, and that is available up until July 2020. Um, and so you might think, well, I don't need it because I've, I use a free, the free service, which is uh, three platforms and I don't really have any more than that so I'm okay with it but actually you know the search facility in there uh, as it shows on screen there's some great examples of uh, how you can do different queries different searches you can even search within a geographical area so you can put the the code for your location and you can go I only want to see hashtags for COVID-19 within this area and you can tell it what uh, what area you want it to cover so and the re the support for hootsuite as well is brilliant so if you have any challenges uh, there is online chat and they put you in touch with somebody who's uh, what they class as um, a super user if you like um, and they're usually really really helpful um, it's not like Facebook where you don't, you're talking and you don't get any response. Um, so do try out um, Hootsuite, um, again, uh, a fantastic resource and, uh, and one that we've been using for years to be fair. Other actions right now, um, well, you can update your social media platforms, your pages, have a look and see what keywords are in there. Uh, does anything need updating? Uh, does any pictures need updating in there? Uh, you can have a look and see who you can unfollow or remove connections. One of the platform, one of the things that we use is something called Tweets Map. Uh, it's it's totally free to use and I just get a, a weekly reminder uh, once a week in my inbox and it'll tell me who's unfollowed me. It'll tell me who hasn't been active for the last two months and who hasn't been active for the last six months. And if they're not active for the last two months or six months and it's not people that I know really well, I'm just going to unfollow them because why am I following people that are not actually using the platform? So it's a great way to just um, weed out, if you like, some of those unwanted um, uh, people within uh, Twitter. 
Um, same for LinkedIn connections, you know, maybe go through your LinkedIn connections and work out, you know, if you've, if you've been one of these people that have always just gone connecting with everybody and actually now is a great time to go, well, I'm going to just go through that and work out who do I actually know, who's actually useful in my network, but who's actually one to have just clicked. Yeah, agree, accept, um, but you don't actually know them. So again, a great time to just um, sift some of those out. On Instagram, um, there's, there is a facility on Instagram where you can go and uh, so if you go into your settings on Instagram um, and look at, well, if you look at your followers, you'll see at the top of the list of your followers now, you've got a category that shows you the least interactive with. So that's the ones that you've least interacted with. Um, and if you wish to do so, you can um, click on that. It'll give you a big long list. And if you want to, you can just unfollow um, some of those people in there um, again it's just tidying things up making sure that uh, you're not following all and sundry just for the sake of it um, if you don't interact with them or they don't interact with you then maybe it's a time to just um, take some of those out of your um, LinkedIn um, people that you're following um, right now uh, yeah, review your Facebook groups, your LinkedIn groups. I've mentioned that already. Check uh, any updates on your website content. You know, are all your pages working? Is there any words in there that need taking out? For example, at one point we had Google Plus throughout our website. Um, Google Plus is non-existent now, so we've replaced that with Google My Business. We did that um, uh, quite a while back now, but again, it's a great, uh, great opportunity to have a look at that. Um, maybe clearing out your photos. I know for me, I don't know about anybody else, but I just take photos and then I never seem to get the chance to take out and delete a load of stuff. So I've taken the opportunity to do that. Um, so and actually put them into folders that are meaningful um, and maybe having a look at your privacy settings on your own um, social media is another uh, opportunity for you to do that just have a look and see that you're not um, sharing things that you don't need to be sharing uh, those kind of things so uh, another great thing to do right now is why not ask for some testimonials some reviews and case studies there's never been a better time to get some of those and get asking for people to put either a testimony on your website or reviews on Facebook or reviews on Google, um, get some case studies, people that you've worked with. Um, they've got free time. You've got free time potentially. So, you know, again, a great uh, opportunity for you to do that. Um, could you create some Twitter lists? So we have a Twitter list that's for, it's an open list. Anybody can view that or subscribe to it. Um, and it's for businesses in Huddersfield. Um, so, or you could have a Twitter list. I think we have another one actually that's um, journalists. So we have a Twitter list that's following loads of journalists and we're just seeing what's, what their updates are. So when you do a Twitter list, you can go to your list and it'll just give you a news feed, if you like, or a timeline of just those people that are in that list. So rather than looking at everything that's on Twitter, uh, just looking at the, the one, one element. So you might create a Twitter list, for example, for uh, COVID-19 or uh, COVID-19 UK, and then you're just seeing what's happening in a specific um, sort of subsection, if you like. So Twitter lists are great. Um, we use them quite a lot. Maybe research some hashtags that you could follow. Um, have a think about the different hashtags that you use. Uh, some of them will be relevant to what's happening in the world right now. But, you know, do you research hashtags for your local area, for example, or for your industry? So have a look and see what's being talked about in terms of those things as well. Um, so, uh, again, a great uh, opportunity to do that right now. Um, set up some Google alerts. So we set up Google alerts um, for our business. Uh, we have, um, if you don't know Google alerts, just Google, Google alerts, they're free. Um, and so you can put any uh, word in there or um, string of words. So you just do a, what they call a Boolean search. So you put speech bubbles around it and it'll search just for that search term. So we search for um, social progress. We search for um, so, uh, the words Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, all the ones that are relevant to our business. So, and then what I do is I get a, um, I don't have a week, uh, you can have a daily update, but I have a weekly update of all those things. Um, and then what I do is I look through to see what's happening, what's new 
in those particular, for me, it's social, there's different social media platforms, but have a think about your own business. Um, I also look to see what's been talked about in terms of social progress. Um, and, and it just gives me an idea of what's, what's going on in the news and blogs and that kind of thing. Um, maybe research some timely content, have a look at your awareness days. There's a website called daysoftheyear.com. Um, gives you loads of different awareness days. Some are absolutely ridiculously, uh, unbelievably dull. Uh, some are really random and some are worth looking at. So have a look at those. And maybe can you create some, what the class is evergreen content. So content that's never going to die. It's always going to be relevant. It's stuff that you can put on your website and you can share it in times of need like now. Uh, a great platform to look at is Answer the Public. Uh, you can put a words in there and it'll do almost like a mind map of different things that people are searching for or might be looking for right now based around one topic of conversation if you like so again another fantastic resource right now update your skills um as i've mentioned already digital knowledge exchange i've got some fantastic uh, webinars coming up all free so get booked onto those uh, adventure is another program but that's for um businesses that are under three years old again some fantastic resources on there um, you could maybe do some training on the different social media platforms. Facebook Blueprint, I've got some uh, amazing online resources. So has LinkedIn Learning, so has Hootsuite um, University and uh, Google uh, Digital Garage. So some fantastic stuff out there. Um, not everybody might want to do that, but again, you know, it's this opportunities uh, to just up upskill yourself. Uh, or maybe read some books. I'm not a big reader. I'm, I'm dyslexic and I find it quite a struggle to read, I have to say. But these are books that I have read and, and enjoyed. Um, Hooked is all about, as it says there, um, building something that's a habit forming um, product or service. Um, it gives you examples in there, for example, Apple and Twitter and how those were set up in such a way to keep people hooked in uh, and keep people in that loop if you like so it's a really good uh, book and and easy to read um another one that i really enjoyed was built to sell uh, i never really thought about when i set up social progress eight years ago about selling it um i'm still not in a position where i want to sell it however it did make me change my mindset in terms of well actually if i continue training there's nothing to sell because it's just me um if i build something around what I deliver, what social progress is all about, as in the core services of the team, then I have built something that I can sell at a later date if I so wish to do so. So great books. And then the one at the bottom traction is the one that I was mentioning where we did our values. It's a great book. Um, you have to work it through with your team, uh, but it's a fantastic book to kind of get everybody on board uh, with the same sort of, um, uh, mindset if you like and and it'll uh, help to sift out those that are not on on track as well with that so um so hopefully all those resources are um uh ones some things that you're looking for um what i would encourage you to do now is just have a think about um you know in terms of your business what takeaways can you take from hopefully you've been writing some down as we've gone through the webinar um but what i would encourage you to do on a regular basis is this win learn change process we do it as a team in our team uh when we when we have our structured meetings um and we're talking about our clients and about how we're working we go around the team and we get everybody to go okay well what's a win what have you learned and what do you want to change? So what, what's working really well? What are you learning that's actually improving? And what do we need to change because it's not really working for us? Um, and I encourage all our team to, to bring those to the table when we have our meetings. And I definitely encourage you to take that process away and think of it on a regular basis. You know, what can you win, learn, change so i hope you found that useful um i think we have got not long but a couple of minutes now to take some questions if anybody's got any Andreas, have we had any questions on the uh, chat while we've been talking yes janet um we've got one question and the question is what is um how do you join a bni bna uh so bni 
Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so it depends on where, where you are. Um, you can just um, look it up and um, there's, um, you can uh, join online. Um, but if anybody wants to send me an email, I'll be happy to put me in touch with somebody locally in their area um, that they can um, register for a BNI uh, meeting um, in the next few weeks. So uh, just email me and I'm happy to, uh, to send that out. But um, yeah. Any other questions? No, not at the moment. Um, some okay. people say that they've never used Microsoft Teams before and now they can't really imagine how they ever did it without it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and no, uh, at the moment we've got nothing, but um, like I said, if, if you've got any questions, people, please do feel free to ask because the more you ask, the more you'll get out of today's session. So um, we, can, we can spare, I don't know, half an hour up until half two today if they've got any more questions, but if not, then obviously we can wrap, wrap the session up. It's, uh, it's entirely up to you, Janet. Um, I'm happy to, to stick on the, on the call if people have got questions and, and answer any questions that anybody's got. So, um, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, we'll just uh, wait for a couple of minutes to, and see if uh, any questions do come through or, and, and if not, then obviously yeah. we'll probably just wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, that's fine.